for a change, I'm actually close to home today, um, probably about 50 yards from my front door. It's one of the rare sort of times, well, particularly this year, that I've had a chance to do a bit of English fishing and, and sort of close to home. It, it's been a, a really busy year for me, travelling away, but I've loved every minute of it. March was the first proper trip away. It was down to near the Spanish border, a place called Ictus Lake. I was, as usual, I was up for a new venue, a new challenge, and uh, I mean, it was a very cold spring over here, and it was horrible, horrible and cold here. And looking at the uh, the weather forecast, it was 27 degrees out there in sunshine. Well, it didn't quite turn out like that because when I got down there, they hadn't actually seen snow settle on the ground in that area since 1985, and we had three days of well, about six inches of snow on the ground. So um, it, it, it was a bit of a shock. It turned out all right because I, I ended up getting my first proper carp in the snow. I was really happy with that and it was worth traveling all that distance for that one moment, really. It was a good session. I was there for a week. I think I had 15 fish, three, three forties was like the, you know, the best of it. In cold conditions, it, it was a, a great week. The next proper trip really was Rainbow. We was about a month behind with the spring, so really, although it was April, it was like fishing in March. Started off there with Simon, the old mate Simon Crow, and we both had 50s, so he had a 50 pound common, I had two 50 pound mirrors. Quite a few fish, a few 40s in there, you know, but it was just a little bit too early. The best of it really sort of happened about a week or two after I'd come home, you know, I started hearing about all the big fish, and I guess that's one of the points really with with the fishing I do. You, you know, you rely on so much luck with the timing of a trip. You know, it's okay, but you can't win them all. There's always next year. It was back home for a little while. Had a lovely session down on Church Pool actually, uh, start of May. My wife Joan had the, the cuckoo fish, which turned out to be the last capture of it. And we had some lovely fish, about 12 fish we had, a few of the scaly ones. And then it was back away, my next trip was Poland, which was, you know, a few, literally a few days after the church lake. Never been to Poland before. Got to say, what a nice country Poland is. The roads were fantastic. Uh, the people were really nice, looked after us really well. And the lakes were absolutely stunning. There's some lovely lakes out there and with some lovely carp. We fished two different lakes. The first one was the best one, Gozlovice, it was called, in the north. Ended up with about 25 fish from there, I think, up to 45-12 was the biggest, nice old mirror. Had a little bit of a rest in June, did a bit of work for a change. <laughs> Even I have to do a bit of work sometimes. July, I was on my way to Cassian my favourite water of all the ones I've ever fished. You know, it goes back, well, 27 years now, you know, I've been fishing Cassian. It was the first place I ever went outside of England and still try and go back there every year. It was a, another struggle, um, but a lovely session. I absolutely loved being there, red hot every day, 30, 30 odd degrees every day, 20 odd degrees at night even. Hardest thing with Cassian is always getting on the fish. It's always trial and error fish a spot if they're there good if they're not move on so it was getting on for the second week when I actually found some fish then I caught fish up to mid 30s before I knew it, it was time to leave again you know Moving into August was uh, Lac Serriere. It's um, totally different to Cassian, obviously. I mean, going from a great big lake down to this, it's only a little three acre pool, Badger's Hole, but um, there's something about it I really like. You know, it's a lovely little lake, nice and intimate. Good weeks fishing that was. Caught fish every day, and it's, it's got four or five sixties in there. And you know, of course, they're always, you're always hoping for one of those. But yeah, the catch, so 20s, 30s, the odd 40 every day, it was, it was good fishing, really enjoyable. September, 
Germany. Started off in the north of Germany again with the pike fishing. Only three days, three separate day sessions out on the boat, out in the Baltic Sea, but me and three of my mates, we had about 60, 70 pike. I had decent fish every day over a metre. They, you know, a metre pike is like our 30s or 40s, or that's, that's like the, the benchmark, and you know, I caught those every day, so well impressed with that. And that was all on the little scope rods as well, you know, I mean, getting to that lure fishing, the rods and reels are silly prices. And I, I thought, oh, you know, I'm sure the scope rods would be ideal for that lure fishing. I took the nine foot three pounders over and they were absolutely perfect for it. And like I say, I caught good fish, well, I caught the biggest fish every single day on them. So, you know, they work all right. Literally three days of that, a couple of days chilling out and uh, drove south to Bavaria, about six, 700 miles south. Lovely little lake down. Started off, well, I had a, a 52 and a, a 30 and a quarter on the first night. So it started well. Ended up catching again every day, 30s and 40s mainly. Ended up with two 50s for that week, so a nice week. Four days at home straight after that. Now I was down at Rainbow with Prairie for a week. We was in Swim 21 down there, which probably the most one-sided swim on the lake where the right hand side is definitely a lot better than the left and it was his turn for choice um, we do it fair like that and so I knew I was going to struggle and and he had caught about 12 fish on Wednesday I hadn't had a bite and eventually I, I did start I, I had a 30 and a 42 on the on the Wednesday and that sort of kick-started it my best was 61 and I had a 54 probably had a 63 so it was a really good week but even as I was packing up on the Saturday morning I had four four fish I had a 42 two 45 pound mirrors and a 49 common literally in the last hour and a half while I was packing up and I'm thinking god I want another week of this you know but that was it my time was up it has been a good year I mean it, looking for it there's been no blanks in all of that and anyway, I know there's always going to be times when it's hard but if I, if I can go away with just one fish I sort of think well you know at least I've caught something. I've had, had some good trips amongst that lot. It's, it's, it's been good stuff for us. I guess the nice thing about working with Nash and using Nash gear is they do everything. Basically everything you want for a trip away is there which is it was absolutely fantastic but there is certain products which are very important to me and there's a, there's a few little ones that stand out that I use a lot when it comes to continental fishing gradually I've gone bigger and bigger in both respects leads gradually I've gone from sort of the old days of threes and fours and I'm working my way up to sixes sevens and eights sometimes you want the lead to give you a good hook hold quick and that's what they do brilliant leads they are grip the bottom well hook the fish well bigger hooks definitely do the job and the twisters I've got to say they're, they're the strongest and the sharpest hooks I've used and you know once they're in they stay in and there's trips even to rainbow that the trips where I've landed 100% of the fish I've hooked and you know it's quite rare on places like that so that's what you want if you can land all the fish you're hooking you don't get any better than that one of the guys, it was Alan Blair who, who put me onto these, you know, he said they're really good for feature finding. In conjunction with an echo sounder, it gives you a perfect reading of what's down there and an echo sounder gives you all the depths and it gives you a rough idea with the features. But what this does, once you put the sections together with, with the, the metal tip, you can actually put that down on the bottom and you, and you can feel what's down there. You can feel if it's gravel, feel if it's mussels, silt. I've really found one of these bits of kit absolutely invaluable it really does help you there's one other bit of kit which has become a real favorite for me the old scope rods mainly it started off with the boat work for rainbow you know long rods don't lend themselves very well to fishing in boats um, but i've actually ended up using the scopes in all sorts of situations and today i'm using it as my spod rod it's probably the rod i use more than any other now i use it all over the place and it's no it's not a gimmick it's a really good bit of kit that's just a few of the bits. I mean, there's, like I say, a whole range of kit that I use, but, you know, that, that's about half a dozen bits that I've just picked out that 
sort of made a difference and I use them all the time, they, they do the job.